from anywhere from middle school to high school and, and also on in college on the student Sunday level. So that's wonderful, and we're, we're so happy to be able to expose children of all ages right. to contemporary art. Sure. Well, I mean, I, you know, as you mentioned, I, I can attest firsthand to that. Um, you know, I have an art department at a, a suburban uh, high school, and we, we will typically bring about 150 uh, upper-level art students from, uh, you know, from my high school, and um, it is, uh, it's their favorite event of the year. And, you know, as soon as it's over, they ask about, you know, whether we'll be able to go back. And, <laughs> and so it's, uh, in, you know, at the beginning of the school year, they'll start asking about whether, you know, it's, the plans are in the works to go back. And, and I think for, for those kids, it's, um, you know, it's not just the, the fact that they get to go have lunch in Clyde Warren Park. They really... Uh, they really you know, get to appreciate seeing uh, contemporary work because they're trying to the best of their ability to create contemporary work. But a lot of times, um, you know, the programming that's out there for them it involves taking someone to a museum and looking at work that, you know, is at least 60 to 70 years old, right? And so for them mm-hmm. to see, you know, contemporary work, um, you know, that's being made and sold, uh, out there and and try to get a better understanding of uh, of um, all of you know the infrastructure of the art world I think is a, a huge asset for those uh, those kids and what what is your impression of uh, of the art wor- art market and the art world um, what is let me ask you this you're in a position where you get to talk to a lot of, uh, of galleries from around the world and uh, who are visiting uh, Dallas and Texas. What is, uh, what do you th- feel their impression is of uh, our art market here and in the, the direction it's headed? You know, most of them think our art market here is pretty rich. Um, there are obvious criticisms that our local community doesn't support our local artists enough. Um, and that's really the the flaw in Dallas's arts community right now is that we have amazing collectors that are very supportive of our institutions, um, and I think it's there's a great awareness of it right now in that many of the collectors are working to really support lo- the local artists, but it's just kind of one of those pieces that has been so disconnected for so long that reconnecting it is difficult and takes a lot of time right you know we've seen many great local artists move away Mm -hmm. over the past years Mm -hmm. um and some of them come back some of them don't don't but they're you know whether they went to school here and then have decided to move on or, or whether they tried to live here for one reason or another maybe they were working at one of the colleges um but they just couldn't find enough success elsewhere they've they've moved away so we're really i think that's our biggest disconnect and i think it's pretty obvious from the international community as well when they come to visit Mm -hmm. um and i think that's really the largest criticism as long you know for the ecosystem of it all to work out the best i think that's that's the missing piece that's going to take the most work sure so you know just trying to parse that a little bit do, do you think do you think it's the the art collectors here having having problems um, trusting that the art in their backyard is comparable to art that's coming out of New York. I mean, do they feel like it, to have have something that is produced or comes out of a gallery in New York substantiates uh, the value in a way that you know art in their backyard, you know, they're not able to trust uh, trust the value of the art? I, or I think that's a little bit of it, but I also think that's changed so much with the internet and just the way art buying has changed drastically over the past few years. You know, we've got places like Artsy and all these different online marketplaces where you can see what's happening at any time, new works uh, that are 
coming up. Um, so I think that's changed a lot. And I think it, you know, it doesn't matter so much where galleries are located. Um, and, you know, our local Dallas galleries do wonderful. But I, I think it's the independent artists that aren't represented is, that aren't represented either by a local gallery or any gallery at all that are really suffering. Right. Um, you know, I think that there's obviously some, but a lot of the local ga- artists that are represented by local galleries have pretty successful careers. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm using local loosely as in like Texas too. You Absolutely. know, like Joseph Pablo as well. You know, he's right. extremely successful um, in, in what he does. Sure. And, and that's, you know, that's really part of my motivation in, in creating this podcast is to, uh, to highlight uh, and have conversations with those artists that have chosen to live and work um, outside of New York, in particular in Texas. And um, as a way of, you know, I feel like um, you know, there is, uh, it's hard for the artists in Texas to uh, to have the same sort of community that they do in New York, because gallery openings are further spread out. They they mm-hmm. aren't they aren't as common. It's it, their you know studios aren't exactly next door to one another. Uh, just um, and so it's hard for folks to identify who is who is part of the tribe. And uh, it, you know, in the in the same way, it, I think it's hard for uh, collectors in in galleries to to have that same visibility. And so, I'm, right. my my hope is that you know, by um, highlighting and having conversations with you know, these folks that are successfully building careers uh, in this part of the world, that um, that you know, people here can take notice, and people from from other you know the the folks that fly over and and uh, maybe are missing some of uh, some great art. You know, um, you know, become aware and you know and maybe even encourage the the struggling Brooklyn artist to know that you know there's a way that I can live a a a, a, a life with with less you know with cheaper rent uh, and have a comparable amount of success that I'm struggling with where I am right and so. Um, and you know, I think um, you know. I look at the the market in Dallas and uh, the art market in Houston, and they're they're both uh, vibrant markets in their own way. And I, I had an artist, um, a relatively successful artist, uh, a couple of years ago. Hello. Um, can you introduce us to uh, to the <laughs> to the person on your lap? Yes, this is Frances Violet. She'll be one week old tomorrow. <laughs> oh my gosh! I, I, so uh, it's, it's such a pleasure to meet you, Frances. Um, but and and thank you so much for being willing to have a conversation with with a one week old on your lap. And so and 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 God bless you for for what's coming All up. Part of the juggling act, right? Exactly. I mean. I mean, you're, you have an annual event. I mean, it's not like you can exactly plan plan these things uh, perfectly. Yeah, but Just I, like, you know what? Women can do anything. Exactly. <laughs> we'll teach her. Exactly. Uh, but I had I had an artist a couple years ago tell me that that uh, he felt like uh, galleries from other parts of the world would be more willing to come visit artists in Texas if there was an easy way for them to get from Dallas to Houston. And that, you know, that the way it currently is, it kind of feels like two separate trips. But, you know, there was this hope that once there was like high speed rail between the two cities, that it would feel more like one uh, contiguous um, art market instead of two separate ones. That, do you have, what do you, what do you think? Does that, does that make sense? Kind of. I mean, I would agree that they are two completely separate markets you know I think the Houston fairs which didn't happen this year um, obviously sadly due to the hurricane Mm -hmm. um, and then you know the other one just didn't happen but there's always been this 
almost rival rivalry between the cities. But I I think, you know, this this is our first year actually that we have a pretty great representation from Houston gallery wise and we're really excited about it. Um, and I would attribute most of that to the fact that the Houston fairs aren't happening anymore. Right. But prior to that, you know, we've really had poor representation from the Houston galleries for it being so close together. Um, we do get a lot of Houston collectors coming to the fair, but it's it's they're pretty isolated markets, which makes no sense, especially to an outsider. It makes no sense. We have museum groups that come from all over the world to the fair, and they, right. you know, we've got a group from Paris this year coming, and they're making like a huge trip of it. And when people look at it on the map, you know, they're like, yeah. Let's go to Dallas and Houston and Austin and Marfa. Right. And like, well, that's going to take you three weeks. <laughs> like, right. It's a place, and you've got like fifty hours of driving <laughs> between between that. Um, but you know, they're doing it. They're making a whole destination vacation out of it. And, but it's also kind of once you realize how far apart things are. And, you know, yes, it's easy to hop on a Southwest flight to go in between A and B, right. between Houston and Dallas, at least. But get, getting to Marfa, it's not easy, no matter what you do. No, no. Even private plane, private charter, it's, it's just not an easy trip. Um, only well worth the trip. Right. So I think they're just, each place is so, so independent right now. Right. And there needs to be, you know, I think this high-speed rail thing, when and if it happens, will be advantageous for a lot of markets sure. in Texas um, to make things travel easier because it's there's just a lot of disconnect. Right. Well, I mean, I, I think, think for our artist community as well. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the long and short of it is, you know, we, you know, most people would not think of, uh, would not even, you know, uh, enter into a discussion about um, the art market in New York and uh, in another market that's seven hours away or five hours away. You know, it's, you know, it, it's just, you know, there's something really odd about the, the immense size of Texas and that we're, you know, roughly the size of France, right? That right. it's, um, that, you know, we, we, can talk about these really dis disparate places as being part of one large whole, right? Um, right. But um, awesome. What um, what else uh, should we What else should we be excited about um, coming up? Uh, you know, in in the coming month. Um, you know, we we mentioned um, you know panel discussions, um, uh, artist led tours, um, you know different uh, you know events in conjunction with uh, with the fair. Anything else we should know about or make sure's on, on our list of of things to do while while the fair is in town? Um, you know, I think there will be a lot of a lot of, a lot of fair sponsored events. You know, the different openings. At the museums, there's some great shows at the Dallas Contemporary that will be opening. Uh, so those will be really exciting. Right. There's different things. You know, there's also lots of different things that the local artists are doing. So I think that it, that's worth taking a look into. You know, it may not be on our fair-sponsored calendar, but I think there's okay. a lot of really great events happening in the community that I think, you know, if you look at things like Central Track and stuff that are great to... Um, to know about and be involved in, especially for local artists. There, you know, I think there's really fun, fun events happening. Great. And so, if uh, if someone wanted to um, to learn more about uh, the calendar and what's available and tickets, all of that information is available at your website, right? Right. And that's right. Yeah. DallasArtFair.com. DallasArtFair.com. And um, Listen, I, Kelly, I really appreciate you taking time out of your morning. And please uh, pass on my thank you to Francis Violet. And um, I, you know, again, I really appreciate you being willing to share your time with, uh, with me here. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thank you for asking me. I really enjoyed it. 
wonderful 